every single story was personal to me. So it was really difficult to develop these stories and then realize that I was going to hand them over to other people to visualize. So having Rob Schraub and, and Roxanne Benjamin and David Bruckner, like having these guys visualize stories that not only were very personal to me, but then I had to sort of help shape from short story into screenplay. <laughs> Creepshow checks so many boxes in my brain and in my heart. And so to be here is, I, I, I really, I mean, I, it's going to be like, how do I top this? And I can't wait for everybody to see what we've done. I kept saying to, to Greg, I was like, this is Creepshow. This is, this is for George. We can't screw this up. I'm just so happy to be here. <laughs> Weirdly, that's kind of where I started was in anthologies. So that format is something I'm a big fan of because it lets you really play around with uh, shorter form stories that might not work at a longer format or a little bit of like morality tale type stuff. And I, I feel like you have a lot of that in the original creep show. What is that? It was really cool to have that be like a first step into TV, working on something that has such a cool history to it and that I grew up watching. And then of course with uh, Greg as the showrunner, it was a really awesome experience. I think this is a chance for another generation to experience what is such a unique tone. You know, there's not a lot of horror comedy out there. Not a lot of stuff that, that uh, uh, oscillates between laughter and scares and that has the same kind of playful sensibility that Romero and King found in the original Creep Show. And I, I think Greg's had a wonderful grasp on that from the get-go. And if audiences these days discover that, I think it'll be something of a unique experience for them. And, and that's all we can ask for. What would an adult do? One of the most exciting parts about Creepshow was getting emails filled with short stories. A lot of them were submissions, a lot of them were stories that we had read before, but I think the first one that I read was a story called The Finger by David J. Scow. Hi. Everybody knows the frame of Creepshow, you know, the comic book framing device for the stories and everything and the hope with the show is that you vary the palette enough to give everybody the flavor that they like or horror flavors as you can if you will. One of the first people that we brought on board Creep Show was Stephen King. So we had uh, Grey Matter which was based on Steve's story and then we felt like it would be really important to bookend Creepshow uh, by having a Joe Hill story. I think she said Joey. I had gotten to know uh, uh, Greg uh, in the, you know, at genre event um, from some years back, and he reached out to me and, and said that they were looking to do a new Creepshow anthology series for Shudder, and, which instantly sounded to me like a great idea, and it was time to see the creep again. And so I said if there was anything I could do for it to help support it, I'd love to be a piece of it. And we talked about some of the short stories that had been in 20th Century Ghost, and uh, eventually we came up with the idea of uh, doing... Um, uh, a fairly new story um, that's in my next collection, Full Throttle, titled By the Silver Waters of Lake Champlain. Say cheese, champ. And then the nice thing was that I started discovering other people that I had never read before, like Josh Mallerman. And all of a sudden I'm reading House of the Head and all these short stories that I really felt fit right in. You're looking for the head. Find it. And I, I just love the idea that not only was I getting a chance to collaborate with some of my friends, but to create new relationships with new people. It's the way it's supposed to be. No, it's not. This new creep show has a very powerful potential to attract new fans 
they will come to understand and like the stuff for the same reasons that you liked it when you saw Creepshow in 82. That's how you make a man suffer. Just twist it right in there. What's great about something that works at the 20 or 30 minute time frame, you know, for an anthology series like Creepshow is you get all killer and no filler. And that, that, can, be, that can be very satisfying. Take my money. I don't feel like it's often that you get to work on a project like this that everyone has so much passion for. And it's, it's kind of cool to, to feel like you're kind of a part of this long chain and now you're a part of the history of Creepshow. Look, I mean, for me, for me as a horror guy, this is truly an honor. I mean, to be there at the beginning um, is a little moment of filmmaking that I will savor forever, no doubt. This is absolute pure joy. It's really everything I've ever wanted to do. Nothing compares to this. Ah!